Yeah. <laughs> used to be a, a mortar training ground. Probably a good thing I didn't find a bomb pegging my tent, isn't it? The paths have become like streams. It's quite a magical place. The things I do. So we attempt to go over a stile. This is where I slip over, isn't it? <laughs> Told you. Not creepy at all. I want to get out of here. Morning. Well, that was a harder night. I walked a bit further than I should have. Ended up at head down. I got my head down and head down, as I said in the previous clip, but that guy that was questioning me would just really freak me out, so hence I did a sort of U turn and, and went to a different place because I felt, I just felt, mm, I might have just been paranoid, but it's like mm, something about the way he was questioning me. It's just like he's a police or something camping police so i you know i i, I went here in, instead rather than nearer to queen elizabeth's country park because like, i didn't feel happy about being there anywhere near any of their land and even though they're both forestry commission i just don't want to deal with it they have rangers and things so yeah i must have thought i think you know on the map with the uh, south downs way probably I would say sort of seven or eight miles, but I walked an extra sort of, I'd say three miles. So I probably did like 10 or 11 because going in and out for water and water is a big thing, but was a big problem on this trip. It seems like that, you know, those wonderful taps stopped at Amberley and there isn't any more. Maybe there's still West Sussex thing or something. Um, so I'm reliant on pubs and um, find any toilets that have got taps and things like that though all the ones i found have got mixer taps or those weird little machines but yeah so i'm dependent on pubs and things which is not so great and so i've been sort of quite thirsty at night because i've not been drinking as much water because i'm like mm, where will the next water come from next apparent water stop is holden farm but i don't know if i can get there today today we've got butts of hill the biggest hill on the South Downs Way, which I'm not looking forward to, especially with my knee. Not really hurting, but sort of not happy. And certainly, right at the end, scrambling up. I'm not going to go down there again. I should have filmed it, but it's just... Yeah, at dusk I was sort of scrambling up these really muddy, sort of steep hills up to the top of Head Down. And they were sort of past because see people had slipped on them. And I didn't slip myself, but I'm so paranoid about slipping because of my knee, so... I think I'm going to go back the boring way and uh, redo the bit just in front of Burriton. Yeah, it'd be deja vu, but I think that's probably safer. The weather won't be as nicer. I don't think it's raining. It might be a bit of rain. I've got to sort out the condensation of the tent. I've got some scrubbies. got some sponges, scrubby sponges, so I can... Which is good because the risotto I had last night stuck to the pan a, b a bit, as usual. Um, I, I will show you the... When I do my breakfast, I will show you the... Um, the lovely tree stump I had for a table. It's been fairly quiet here. The odd sort of deer noise, you know, little owls, but not been disturbed by by people. So this one ended up. About to bring it down. About to, about to take it down. But unfortunately, there's that sort of impromptu, what seems to be a mountain bike pass, and I know that there's another one over there. And the main path is over there, um, well outside. So I thought, ah, oh, probably a good idea to make it early today. Finally, the sun. We will retire to the breakfast chamber. And it was my dinner room as well. Very useful stump, this. Yes. I'm using my sit mat to sit on because it's a. It actually wasn't too damp, I think it's got a shelter. I found a lot of the places I've been sitting have just been damp. Yes, let's get some breakfast. <sighs> that feels a lot better. It feels like head down is like a bit like Grafham down. It's kind of not really visited much, or certainly not 
on a Monday morning. It's seven o'clock and I'm not seeing a soul, not a dog walker or a dreaded mountain bike. I'm sure someone will come along in a second to prove me wrong. But um, it was, when I was at Grafton Down, I left about eight, nine, eight, nine o'clock and didn't see anyone at all. It seems like these places people might come to them. Whereas the Queen Elizabeth Country Parks perhaps didn't have loads of people, and that's why I was another reason that after that busy body was trying to uh, give me the Stasi treatment about you know, what I was doing, um, I did notice how many people were still there, even though it was sort of about four or five o'clock, you know, it started to get into dusk. I thought, hmm. And there were some bits which looked very possible, but I think you'd have to be a bit stealthy and sending away very early in the morning. Where I'm here is not stealthy at all, although fairly stealthy. I mean, one of the things about stealth is going to where no one is, and uh, you know, you don't have to be as stealthy if there's no one there. Onwards to Butzer Hill, looking forward to that, um, and we'll see if we can do another eight miles today. I'm getting a bit low on food because I thought I'd do this in three or four days because I thought I'd do a bit lot more you know, like ten miles a day, but. Um, I'm not going to restock until A, I find a shop, and I know there's not very much shops coming up, um, so it might not be till tomorrow. And also, I know there's at least one, my favourite service garage, there's at least one garage coming up. And also, whenever I do that, it kind of jinxes it. Quite often I've had a trip where I, I restock, get loads of food, and then I, something goes wrong, so I'm a bit like, mm, I thought I'd much rather be kind of low on food and finish the trip rather than get more food and then the pack weight sort of kills money. So That's the hill I was on. Then took somewhere over there and then I think it was somewhere like there and then I've walked there to the mists back up to here. This is the bench I was at yesterday. Lots of curious robins. Very cute robins. I'm in Queen Elizabeth Park. Queen Elizabeth Country Park. I'll show you. This is really beautiful. But looking around, there isn't any really good places to camp. I mean, there's a few like behind a down tree, but it was like, oh yes, I find out they're actually a bike run. And that's the reason why I didn't camp here last night. So many mountain bikers, there's a sign saying, caution mountain bikes. There's lots of these sort of rat run, uh, off-road bike paths running through these woods. And knowing mountain bikers, I'm sure some of you will be like, in my comments, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lovely mountain biker. I never do that. They don't always stick to the path. So if you've got another path, or clearing, they might just crash into you in the early morning. So, yeah. Though it's a Monday, I suppose they'll be at work at their digital agency. It's beautiful here, it's really beautiful. I'm heading to the visitor centre because I'm hoping they've got water there, because I'm very low on water. You can hear the A3. Uh, I used to live near the A3, so it's a bit strange kind of crossing the A3 on the South Downs way I had to do it at some point. That ran until not that late. I would, ex I really was expecting all night. There might be some so tired I didn't hear it, but and then it started up at like four or five in the morning. In head down, you could hear the trains because I've got to say the trains go through there. The Portsmouth trains go straight through part of head down, and actually one of the paths I was planning to go on, the path goes along the line, and I was tempted to go there because. Railways tend to be not monitored that much. They tend to be, no one wants to go there. It's like, oh, it's a train line, oh, it's noisy. And so I was thinking that would be quite quiet. So but where I was on the top of the hill was quiet. Unlike here, where I've seen quite a few people just walking through the wood so far, and it's sort of like, I don't know, 8.30, maybe 9, but I think it's 8.30. I've seen quite a few people between here and Burriston. So nobody in head down at all. And yeah, I've had to go quite slow. I, I've been treating it a bit like a Sunday stroll, it was Monday. Um, because it seems to be that, you know, if I, if I stress and try and rush to get there, I, you know, the knee kicks off. Whereas if I sort of walk like one, two miles an hour, you know, half my usual pace or sort of slow stroll pace, 
um, it's fine. So. Well, they're saying what I said, I just stumbled onto this pine forest, but this is very, very hidden away from the trails going through it. But a magical place. This would be perfect. Apart from the and <laughs> the littered on the other floor. <laughs> but yeah, behind these little bushes. Lots of moss. Wow. I don't know if I would have got here in time, but yeah, this would have been a good place. Yeah, boo. Yeah. I like where I was, although yeah, if I'd walked the extra mile or so, I think yeah, possibly could have got here. Oh, I don't I didn't know about it. Seemingly, you need to know the site well already, and I didn't, so that's always a problem with camping. While camping, walking through spaces you don't know, is that you need to really need to research them, but you can see them on the map, but they might be fenced. You can see them on the satellite maps, they might be fenced. Um, there's a limit to what you can do. Really, what you have to do is um, go there, but then why would I walk the South Downs way 100 miles just so I can find the places to walk and to walk it a second time? You know? Found water. Now, yeah, it's at the visitor centre, so as I expected, I thought there'd be a water fountain or a thing here. The previous water was Hill Barn. I've got no idea where that is because that must have passed that. No idea. Well, it's about the area of cocking. I don't know, but the next one is the sustainability centre. Also, passing a youth hostel, I think. Better go to some glamorous places. South Downs Way, the scenic route. You probably can't hear me. I haven't put the microphone in, but. I wanted you to hear the noise. This is... This is the A3. But we're heading up that way, I think. The Butzer Hill. Watch for this. There's no signs in the country park. The South Downs Way goes under there. But there's this lovely bridge here. I thought it was going this way, and actually I needed to go under there. And there's no sign, the sign's just suddenly stopped. Oh, there is here, Little, if you miss, very tiny, very tiny acorn. I missed that coming through here. So here we are, Butser Hill, I'm not looking forward to this. Yeah, so let's see what the biggest hill the South Downs way can provide us some. I made sure I did only oh, didn't get too much water because I didn't want to carry up the hill. I hope there was some water on the other side. Made it! Top of Butter Hill, yeah. See, it's beautiful. Not too sure about the uh, communications tower though. Full of Neolithic stuff. There's a recreation of a village near here, which I think it still exists. And I think they even had a TV show about living there for a year in the 70s. But it was all that sort of very sort of Aaron sweater back to the, you know, old ways. There was lots of like Victoriana as well. And we used to live near Bliss Hill, which was another recreation, you know. So they had people actually doing the skills there and, and living there. And, and, you know, I don't think they have to do that anymore. But there's a sustainability centre, which I suspect might have grown out of that, uh, which is where the next water stop is. Well, it often pass here on the A3. It actually cuts through part of it, which is horrible. There's a new landscape. I don't know how they got permission to do that, but that's probably the 60s for you or 50s. I don't think I ever came up here. I don't think so, which is sad.
I'm actually finally here. Rather misty today. And it always seems to be windy around here. Yeah, and it's 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 always like it seems to be 30, 40 up here. Or faster. Be a good place for a wind mass, that probably the locals will complain. But you know be a great place for a wind mass. But over there is uh that's Windmill Hill apparently. So there probably used to be a windmill on there. Good place for windmills, definitely. Although it's windy up here, 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, it's like Chanterbury. Although not as bad as Chanterbury. So that's sporadic. I think it's always windy up here. People kept telling me, oh, you should, you're walking the wrong way. I used to name my blog, actually, you're walking the wrong way. A bit like that guy yesterday, you're walking the wrong way. People tell me that. But actually, walking until the wind was... My back. Whereas if I had been walking from Winchester, I'd be walking into the wind today. So yeah, yeah. And actually, in my experience, only a couple of days have I ever actually had to walk into the wind. The received wisdom is it's usually westerlies. It's not. It's quite often northerlies and southerlies. Um, only a couple of days last time did I actually have it, you know, in my face. Most of the time, it was actually to the side. So you know. If you're going east west, obviously you're going to get wind one side or the other. So, yeah, I made it. Now I need to get off it before I get blown off it. 178 miles. Harting down 7 miles. Exit 9.5 miles. I'm heading towards East Meon. And Winchester 22 miles. Yay. More amazing scenery. Not so happy about the wind. I hope that will die down. Wrong. At the sustainability centre. Very nice. Unfortunately, the cafe's not open. They do have water. Well, these don't see mine views in the water. They have like a, a sink outside, so you can use that. You have to go inside, right near the eco lodge. But apparently, the next water is. Loma Farm. So I've got to think around that is Holden Farm. I'm going to head to East Meon and see if we can get to the shop. So yeah, there isn't supposed to be water before Loma Farm, but there is at Meon Springs, so good for them. Good morning from Old Winchester Hill Nature Reserve. You can hear all the birds going crazy. So many birds here. Lots of owls. I heard that at night. I didn't record last night because uh, it was just one of those survival nights because it chucked it down in the late afternoon for about five, six hours, five o'clock. Complete deluge. And also it was gusting 30 miles an hour. So I had to find a sheltered place. So I had to push on to find somewhere sheltered. I went through a place called Meon Springs. You could tell that eyes were on my back and this wasn't anywhere. No places to, to camp for a long time. After there was Duncan Woods. It looked very, very possible. Um, but, you know, I wanted to get back onto the South Downs Way because I, I did a, a detour into East Meon at the shop, but the shop wasn't very good. Um... It was quite, you know, no gluten-free bread, no gluten-free anything. Uh, it was selling a lot of Jack's stuff. Isn't Jack's a little brand of... Um, so not a very good village store. So I had a, a very terrible Nestle hot chocolate from them and got some knickknacks, which became my dinner, and some wine gums and some honey roast peanuts, which again became part of my dinner because I didn't actually have any dinner. By the time I got here, I just put the... I got drenched trying to find a site that's flat, drenched putting the tent up. I made a hot drink and then while while it was really windy and, and the tent was flapping and um I should have I should have filmed it, it was quite dramatic, but it was a bit like uh, you know, I just went to sleep. And then when I woke up at eleven o'clock it was calm like this. No wind, it just all dropped. But I didn't fancy any food then, so I just ate the rest of the knickknacks. I have to say, I now understand the no cook people because it was a lot easier. And I, actually, I wasn't massively hungry. I'm a bit hungry now, and also it's my last 
meal um, because I couldn't find anything you know, I could eat at this the stores. So I need to press on. Today it's going to be more rain. It stopped overnight. Um, from 8 o'clock it's going to be chucking it down again. So I want to get the tent down before then. Try and dry off the tent as much as possible. Um, and yeah, I want to get out of here as quickly as possible because I am near a path. It was the only place I could find in the woods. This place is an ex army site, apparently. So there's all this stuff, about, you know, don't touch anything. So I was like finding these weird objects, and going, oh dear. And I was clambering over these lots of ash dieback, so lots of fallen trees. I was clambering over these and lots of, you know, obviously wet logs and stuff. And I was like, please don't, please don't break your ankle in the woods because no one will find you. <laughs> and so I then, um, Around here, but uh, I'm dreading putting my wet clothes back on again because I had dry clothes to sleep in. Um, some things have dried on me, but the wet trousers, oh, no, I'm not looking forward to that. I passed the 22-mile mark from about 5, 6 miles away, so I'm less than 20 miles away. I think I'm maybe 15, 16 miles away. I haven't, I haven't totted it up yet, but certainly if I didn't have my pack and all this stuff, I could do it in a day. But I'm uh, hoping to be a lot near Winchester by tonight. If I don't, just sort of, if something doesn't go wrong. But it's looking like Wednesday. And Wednesday's a really nice day as well. So typically that's probably will be the last day because it's always a nice day, isn't it? It was fairly toasty in the tent. 11 degrees currently. It's been low as 8 and 12. Out there, I know it's a lot colder. I left it out last night and it went down to. I think the lowest was two degrees. I said I'd leave it outside, yeah, I did. A lot warmer in here. But I'll go get some breakfast. Tent survived the night quite well. Although, uh, I had lots of slugs. You can see all my stuff hanging up, hanging up my. Luckily, they don't like my Precip Eco, thankfully. But on this side, they climbed into my uh, fire make pool. Found the slugs inside there. There's always a danger because there's a little slit on the top. But I left it outside last night, and uh, yeah, this is the view. It's about 6:40, <sighs> and there's my little breakfast nook down there. I've now got the fun job of uh, yeah, look, lovely leaf decoration on the inside. Actually, no many, not so many slugs. It's a lovely job of getting scrubby and trying to get rid of some of this water. Yeah, I need to sort out that ridge line. I don't know why it should be more taut. So I'm not sure why that is. And it's taking a lot of fuel to boil. I want a nice hot coffee, but I've got loads of fuel anyway because I didn't have a meal last night, so I've got more fuel than I expected. And the skies are darkening. No one's come through, so I don't know. There's the path. If it doesn't rain before I'm breakfast. I'm not looking forward to the rain at 8 o'clock. Might be early, who knows? I mean, it stopped early last night, so it'll start early. Or maybe it will happen at all, but fingers crossed, but who knows? <laughs> yes, as promised, it's early. I thought it'd be 8 o'clock, and it's 7 30. Rain, coffee in the rain. It's gentle rain, but yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. I was hoping I'd get my tent rolled up before it chucked it down, but yeah, it's already wet anyway, so. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the paths have become like streams. This circular path goes back where I came from according to Osman, but my phone I mentioned I don't know if it recorded, but I mentioned that I don't usually film weather like this. Partly because my equipment is not really that waterproof. My microphone definitely isn't. I went around the wrong way, that's the scenery to avoid 
a wet, grassy, steep bank. Guess what? <laughs> At least I've got a rope, I suppose, in case I fall. It's going to be one of those days, isn't it? Spring! Cowslip, hairy violet, oh, purple orchid. Sheep are sheared and penned into small areas. That allows grassland plants to flower and set seed. And it rains! <laughs> Sadly, I couldn't have really camped here because there's a brick floor, but there's like a little shelter guide centre, which if I'd known about, I could have had breakfast here. We were talking about the fact it used to be a, a motor training ground. Lovely. This is fun. Uh, I saw the signs when I was right saying, you know, you be, be careful about where you go and avoid certain items. But, yeah... The grasslands have been searched, but the scrub and woodland areas have not, and so remain closed to visitors. Yeah, they didn't say that. <laughs> they just said, "If you see anything unusual, don't you know, go and report it to the UC military." Yeah, it's probably a good thing I didn't find a bomb pegging my tent, isn't it? That was a long hill of grass, and uh, I really wish I'd gone the other way now. But, uh, uh, it's going to be like this most of the day. Uh, reconsidering this walk. Uh, we're just enjoying being out of the lane for a second. I mean, look at it. I mean, this wasn't as bad as that, but it's, it's all like this. Annoyingly, last night this was not as bad as this. So I'm just, I'm just uh, <laughs> going and being a bit gung ho about this. But trying not to get more deluged until I get to shelter. There was what looked like a perfect place to camp uh, at a car park. That even had a bench underneath the tree. You know, a bench and a you know picnic bench. But I went, didn't see it because the South Downs Way joins Old White Winchester Hill. Uh, just after it, that's sort of accident. It's right by that place. I showed you with the uh, information boards and both those have been wonderful I've known about them but of course I didn't see them because they're further up we haven't even got to where I got to last night <laughs> I'm drenched and my feet are wet now the hill fort well that would be a good view <laughs> if it wasn't flooding yeah the reason why I went for Old Winchester Hill, as I saw on the map, that it's all like this. It's all farmland for miles after Old Winchester Hill, up to about, well, sort of closer, maybe past Loader Farm, sort of close to Winchester. There are a few spots after that, but stretch where it's just all farmland. I really, really, really need to find somewhere dry because I'm fording a puddle. I stupidly didn't put my waterproof socks on today. And uh, I've got wet feet now because the one of the well, I think both of them did. One's fairly dry, the other one's not, and I'm wearing merino wool socks. So, you know, I mentioned before actually, yeah, I, I really need to find somewhere dry. You see, here there's no benches or bush shelters or anything, and it's like I've passed millions of them millions of bush shelters, millions of they're all in the weirdest places. Never you want them. There seems to be a lot of these. This is a crash sites of two um, things that crashed on uh, a training for D-Day at 4th of April 1944. The Sterling, or the Horsa crash site is here. The Sterling crash site is 17 miles. There's nothing worse when I've, I've come across things like, like, like um, down on Dorset, several in floating tanks that sank and there was quite a lot of people died so yeah you see this well, over there I think apparently a mile north of Warnford Park so it's three men died wow oh f no this is I don't know how deep that is but this is why I brought the Waterbury socks and I'm going to 
forward to it, I think. It, it's luckily a very solid path. So, I mean, it depends how deep it gets. Uh, oh, where am I? Waterproof. They, they are quite long neoprene socks. I wanted to stop somewhere, you know, like shelter to do it, but I have to do it here. It's not as cold as you'd think. But let's see how deep it's not actually that deep yet. I've got my shoes in my bag and I'm using my Ah oh, it's it's a bit up here. It's actually quite muddy but luckily not too stony. <laughs> Pretty easy selfie stick than anything else would go wrong. I'm glad I brought these. Glad I brought them. But it's, uh, I feel like Noah affording the waves. I'm just hoping there's no broken glass or anything in here. Oh, that's all we need. Hawthorn. I can see some rocks there. Oh, we've got a little island. <sighs> the things I do. I just didn't want to go back, and I was like, well, I've got. I hope I, that's not what I think it is, isn't that? Oh. Yeah, that's wonderful. This water's got dogs in it. <laughs> Tim, what did you do today? I I forded a pass. These socks, they're, they're made by... What was it? Tanzant? And I got them via AliExpress and I was like, oh, are they any good? No, it's getting deeper. Well, as long as I don't go up to my waist, I don't care. I don't know what that is, I don't want to know what that is. I stood on, it's not a little bag of dog poo. Seriously people, take your dog poo with you. Yay! We made it. Yeah, the whole area is flooded. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. This seems to survive very well. Foxies don't. They're a little bit cold, but I don't think they're wet. So initially I thought, "Oh, is that wet?" And I was like, "No, it's just the cold." But we'll see. Of course, after fording that that pass, which was a lot of fun, and I need to put my. A waterproof socks on anyway because my feet got wet. I then found that there's actually a pass through the hedgerow. <laughs> a guy who could take him and took it, and I was like, oh, I could have made it a lot easier for myself. But I'm glad I did that. <laughs> it was oddly fun doing that. Like, okay, I'm not going to stop. The Mion Valley Trail. I think this is a the railway line, because there's a bridge back there, which I filmed, and there was a disused line from Petersfield to Midhurst, and obviously this is it. You can see the amount of flooding there. I forded through that. <laughs> that was very enjoyable, strangely. Uh, getting, it was like, oh, let's get even more wet. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, apparently mild Exton, which is good. And I'm liking this solid path. Well, this is the wonder of locomotive archaeology. Ouch. It was quite funny when I was finishing up, a guy turned up and he wasn't, he didn't, I don't know if he had waterproof socks and had boots on. And I said to him, oh, I hope you can swim. And then he used that very pass that I found just at the end. I was like, ugh. But yeah, looking at it, it was so muddy that I think it would have been sort of more trouble than it's worth. And if you're ever thinking, oh, why does Tim not have his straps on when he filmed himself from this angle? The reason is because they kind of get in the way. I put them on immediately afterwards. 
the silly strap as I call it, which is this one. I put it on, I can put it on now. But usually I have to take off my rucksack, get my selfie stick out. Yeah, you know, it's it's a whole palaver. It's like with the uh this this thing and the microphone. You know, it's a it's it's not too bad, but uh, especially when it's really chucking it down. I can't rely on my gear at all. Especially it seems like rain actually switches the video off and it might have already gone off already we'll have a look slow road ahead good i'd hate it to be a fast one <laughs> i'm sure everyone comes here for the ponds i'm sure i had a nice conversation with a local who was, you know we were about the flooding of the route so yeah i need to check the map not where i am but yeah apparently they've done it in sections the south downs way one time we go, oh i need to stop and Put my selfie stick back in, but yeah. So yeah, no nice, nice conversation. Um, I feel a lot better now. I've got those waterproof socks on. A lot warmer. Yeah, I went the alternate route. <laughs> more flooding, and I didn't fancy doing more fording again. But yeah, it seems to be the theme of this trip. And this is the remains of an old railway bridge. Yeah, you can walk along the top of here and then down here. It kind of gets around it. Obvious signs. 1,030. <laughs> yeah, just a little. I'm not sure why the temporary route, temporary rider's route, but I'm not going to argue about it and try and find out what's going on in this weather. <laughs> This is Exton. Millennium tree, breed, protect. Screw all the other trees though. I'm not flooding. Water, water everywhere. But not a drop to drink. And I thought the Thames was bad in flood. I'm not really here to review um, pubs or places, but I have to say the, the shoe in at Exton was really friendly and really cool. Um, and didn't seem to be didn't turn up the nose up at a hiker. Whereas the same can't be said for me and Soak post office. It was a bit a bit snooty. But yes, really nice. Recommended. Looks like they have nice food, but I can't afford it. But they got me some gluten free rolls, which is really helpful. Here have a lane that says no trucks. Trucks this way. So of course they put the South Down way along the truck way. Why? Anyway, it's dangerous. Case in point. Why? At least I'm now teasing my sticks. I've had to use them once now. Somebody who just was there was plenty of room on the road and the one before gave me plenty of space the one after didn't and I had to put my sticks out yesterday near Meon Springs there's a glamping location with private signs everywhere and styles that are closed and uh, obviously they're like oh we want to make sure no one can wild camp anywhere near us so they must use our fishing lodge and glamping location it's those are the kind of people that they want Amberley. They don't want us. They don't want people who are working class at all. Me and Stoke, uh, you can always tell if they, uh, you know, have a conniption fit about if you've got a pack on and he told me to take it off and even though I was about to pay and it, was, it made it a real fact because I had to then pay, get the stuff, then re try and somehow get my back bag back on because of the people coming and going. It was like, fair enough, but it was like, you know, it was had a sign saying, please take your pack off and leave it here, fine, but it's such a tiny place, it's hard to, to know. It looks like maybe I've got about 12 kilometres, 10 miles, maybe a bit longer to go. I could possibly do it in a day. One of the Facebook groups had some locals who were indignant about it, and they eventually said, oh, you must have looked like a wrong gun. 
They really did not like me in Amblia, especially at the schools. Gave me the same as that guy in Burrison, the sort of third degree about where you're staying. You know, it's just not friendly. And I just got the impression from the locals as well. You know, and it's very telling. You know, the richer the posh of the place, sometimes the more less friendly they are. It's not always the case. They say they want hikers, but they want middle class hikers. They want day hikers, they want people wearing Patagonia. They don't want people wearing Caramore. They don't want people wearing the Cathlon. They want people wearing Papaxi or, you know, Fall Raven or North Face. No, no slight to those brands. And there is. I took a path inward. And here's the actual South Downs Way. Now, your famous last words, but I don't know why they were guiding me away from this. Because they must meet up at some point just up there anyway. So, I don't know, maybe it's very muddy. It's called the White Way. They might disappear under lots of puddles or something, but seriously, that's happened all the way across anyway so uh, the white way more the mud way oh is that in Kent <sighs> saw some stuff near the uh, old train line which looked very promising some of the banking there looked very wild campy friendly here the people in me and Stoke weren't yeah, places with me on. What is it with me on? They watch me fall over into the white mud. <laughs> yeah, this is the white way. But yeah, we're heading up to Beacon Hill, which is funny. I used to live live somewhere called that. But uh, not that Beacon Hill. And a style. Shall we attempt, or oh, how full of water is that? Shall we attempt to go over a style? This is where I slip over, isn't it? <laughs> Told you. <clears throat> That's your fault. <laughs> I have to say, this is probably the worst of the hills, mainly because it's just so slippy. This is just coming up to the top of Beacon Hill. Each of these have had their own elemental theme. You've got here, the first one was all about uh, wind. Too much wind. The second one was about ice, the big freeze. And this is definitely about flood. <laughs> so yeah, wind, ice, water. This has definitely been the flood one. As I thought, the you probably can't read that, but the it says South Downs Way temporary route, South Downs Way temporary route, and then it says below where I've come from South Downs Way temporary rough road route route for walkers. So they were directing signs were directing me along the horse bicycle way. Obviously, why why the dead inflict those on trucks or vice versa? I don't know. Rather confusingly, where there was a a beacon wasn't Beacon Hill. This is the top of Beacon Hill. Ah, so that was a false Beacon Hill. And it's got a nature reserve up here, which is one of the places I was aiming for. It certainly looks like there is possible spots up here. The only question would have been, because we had the, the bad suddenly gusts last night, I and mean, it'd be great for tonight, but I'm not planning to stay here. But uh, I'm not seemingly near anyone. And you've got that amazing view. It would have been brilliant, but I would have got here. I wouldn't have got here until, uh, I don't know, seven or eight o'clock at night. So, you know, there's no way I would have got here. But here's what I was aiming for. So it's Winchester 10 miles. I thought it'd be that sort, that sort of thing. I'm not sure. In my new speed, I'm gonna try and get as close as possible. 
I've asked my legs to, you know, give me a bit of pardon that I might go faster today because, you know, I've promised them uh, if, it, if that happens and uh, they will get a nice, nice bed. Whereas if, if they gripe and grizzle, which are starting to a bit, then they're going to get a cold, <laughs> a cold bed, probably a rainy bed um, tonight and then a you know, warm bed tomorrow. Ah, that's much more likely. A bit further in, you've got this sort of wood here. Um, yeah, that would have been more sheltered away from where the wind coming in. So yeah, I think it would have been possible here. It might be a bad idea. Is that if I, as I get to Winchester, the, the paths are going to get easier. They like it to be. They seem to be roads and and you know dog walky things. And I think um, you know it, we could see how we get. You know, I mean certainly. We'll definitely do it by tomorrow, but I could, you know, if the going's not too horrible. If I'm fording muddy, muddy things like I've done today, no, I'm not doing that in the dark. I feel like the going's gonna be better now, from what I know from the map. So we'll see. Maybe famous last words, and if it is, then I will find somewhere to camp. And I don't really care if it's obvious, and I don't care. I break all the rules of wild camping. I, you know, I'm gonna let the tent dry. <laughs> and if anyone sees me, it'd be like, "Well, I'm going. This is the last day of the trip, so I'll be like, you know, what's that term? Um, demob happy." You know. And as promised, the tap at Loma Farm exists. It's a different kind of tap. I've not seen a tap like that before. But uh, when's the next one? Holden Farm, which we knew about three miles. Um, yeah, previous one, Sustainability Centre, ten miles. There are some very big gaps in the taps. Um, obviously, there's one the Sustainability Centre that's 14 miles before that. So, yeah. It's not just some places have a, a, a full of water and some places are very unwatered. I don't know why. Only the South Downs Way would take you down a road like that, and I've just been on a, on a smaller road that's similar. Um, this is a pub called the Millbury. I don't know if this is Millbury, but yeah. You know, in one sense, I'm happy because I can walk quickly on roads like this. They're not like complete mud fests. So I'm happy about that. I'm also like, because. You're just getting like so many cars per minute and they drive like idiots around here. I'm having to use my stick all the time. Holden Farm. So this is water here. I made that in just over now. That's good. Winchester six and a half miles. Exton five and a half miles. That's where I was earlier. Eastbourne 94 miles. I don't leave 94 miles and it's only six and a half miles to go. I think I'm just going to go for it. Apologies to my legs in advance. Although first they expect you to cross this. Washington all over again. Ah. Ah. Yes, strange bench. <laughs> I mean, there hasn't, I have to say, there haven't been that many benches. Do you know there was a a few around old Winchester Hill and then they all dried up and I was like thinking I'd really love a bench here because I'm knackered and a lot of the bit between kind of old Winchester Hill and here has been a lack of anything really no shops no pubs apart from the one in Exton the shop in Exton after that after Exton it's pretty much nothing um, apart from water, so I'd be very aware of that. It's kind of like the last 10 15 miles. If you're doing it this way, I mean, if you're doing it the other way, I suppose it doesn't, you know, it's different. But if you're doing it from East Point to Winchester, there is pretty much nothing. And uh, as I say, if you're doing it this way, you might be at the point where you really need something 
I'd like a toilet. I would actually wouldn't like a toilet at the moment, but yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. Maybe less than five miles away from Winchester. I'm going to just go for it, I think. You know, the best time to arrive would be, you know, in the morning and then say goodbye and go, you know, and, you know, in the light and then go and see Winchester Cathedral, which I've never been to. That kind of thing. I don't think I've ever been to it. I just can't stand another wet night in that tent. I mean, it's kind of, after last night, the tent is drenched. I'm drenched. A lot of my wool socks are drenched. I do have dry socks, but not as warm. So my feet are going to get cold. It's kind of like, in fact, someone like here would be ideal for a, for a campsite, actually. So it's a bit, yeah. Yeah, this actually would be quite good for a campsite. Threatening rain later on, it hasn't happened, so it might not happen, or it might happen later in the evening. You know, it's like there's dark clouds or show blue sky, and it's like, which one is it? I think if it was a lovely, warm evening, it was summer, really nice, I'd be like, yeah, you know, the tent will dry, it'll be fine. Uh, and then and then not rush into Winchester the next day, you know, go to go, to, you know, then amble along and, you know, that's what's been best for my knee is a sort of a slow pace i'm breaking that rule and hopefully i uh, i've got like four days to recover before the collab video so hopefully that's gonna be fine fingers crossed you can't see i'm wearing gloves but knowing me i wouldn't be able to cope with even though i've got the food i've got enough food and i've got enough fuel and you know all that sort of stuff the fact the tent is completely drenched including the inner I'd much rather just finish this. That's why I'm having a rest here, and then I'm just going to do the final push. And if I have to walk in the dark, I will. I think I just want to go home. Yeah, rather mudded in now, though. There's a... Yeah, this is the rest of me. But... <laughs> you saw the state of those puddles. It's getting a bit too much like... It's not exactly dusk, but we're getting there. That's a beautiful scene. That's a less beautiful scene. I'm hoping that's the worst of it. That's the sun going down. And I've just gone past Temple Hills. Now, I don't know what the deal is with Temple Hills. I don't want to know what the deal is with Temple Hills. When I saw Temple Hills on the... The very strange names and the hippie, hippie forest, hippie valley, and so I thought it's either one of two things. It's either a, a cult compound or a holiday park. Whoever has it is loaded because the whole the area is grassed over and it looks like a golf course, but it's very beautiful. It looks like a golf course, but it's not a golf course. But then you get into the wood. And there's all these disused, you know, and lived in vans and there's different, it, yeah. The whole place gives off a, a Texas chainsaw vibe. So I'm hightailing it out of here. <laughs> I mean, it does say, don't camp. Which, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't camp there if you paid me. Something very spooky about that place. But yeah, I'm hoping after Temple Hills, it should be easier going and tracks like this. I hope so, because it's soon going to be dark. Bye bye, son. I've only appeared a few times today. But I can hear that big road, which I think is the Minster Bypass. And it's not too far away. So I'm hoping it's something like three miles, two miles. I have kept up quite not completely the pace I would like the pace that my feet are hating but as fast a pace as I can safely through mostly it's tracks hard tracks with some puddles which is great but unfortunately there's been some mud I know I moan about bikes and GGs churning up bridleways but the worst offender really is tractors. Creepy sign come on hotel but seemingly with writing all over it. 
Not creepy at all. I'm not following that QR link. I want to get out of here. Also, lots of dead animals as well in that place. Uh, a dead rabbit that hadn't been eaten, it's been killed. So it wouldn't be a fox. And lots of, lots of dead birds. Eviscerated birds. All around that Temple Hills site. So yeah. Just bad omens. Bad omens. Lots of bad omens. Does that mean I made it then? Cheese foot head. Get your way to the South Downs Way National Trail. Wow, there's all the hills. Good job. We can uh, start hearting, press me on, and we are here. So, almost there. Another lovely road to cross. Yeah. Let's scamper across. It's six o'clock. I'm feeling a lot more. Positive now. Well, my feet aren't, but you know, <laughs> what do they know? Although we still have some mud, obviously. So, Telegraph Hill. That looks very possible. I met a very nice couple. I told them about the spooky Temple Hills, and there were a lot of people in the it ship's bell. It was called. Next, and very amazed by my feet. Not my feet, as in, not my feet. <laughs> Might be amazed by my feet smell. More amazed by my, I don't know, how far I've walked. I am, I suppose, in a way. I'm sad that they did it in three parts. I'd like to have done it in one or two, but, you know, it's still 100 miles. It's not to be sniffed at. And there we have the first sight of Winchester. Is that a barrow? That'd be very appropriate if that was a barrow. You can see very much. It's so dark. Well, goodbye, South Downs Way. I think we're about to descend into the proper tracks and away from. I'm not totally sad to see the muddy things go as we as it goes dark yeah that's Winchester glad to be going time for another project then so yeah keep watch this space <laughs> I don't know if there's a marker at Winchester if I was off on that mud hopping in the dark yeah had a few pools to traverse across so I don't know if there's any more I thought it was over the mud. Surprise! There was some bonus mud. Just have to chilk them. It's seven o'clock. All's not well. I've just taken the ibuprofen. Because um, my... No, nothing spooky about that at all. Um, because my... Uh, it's not my knees kind of doing the hot stabby painy thing. It's right, it's more just my feet. Bye spooky wood and spooky field. And now a bridge over the big road I was saying about. Oh it's the M3. The gateway to Winchester. Is that Washington? Oi Washington, they did a bridge. In Winchester as well. Well, I'm surprised they're expecting me to cross this. Nice of them to put on the Winchester Canal. And it's about half a foot more deep. Nice. Um. Allegedly, it starts here at the Old City Mill. I've had I spent hours trying to wander around Winchester trying to find the start of the South Downs Way. I don't know 
it keeps directing me somewhere south of here, so I don't, I don't know where it is, but... Ah, oh, there we are. The trail. Ha, ah, found it. 100 miles, done. I'm better now. So, I have to say thank you to everyone who has watched this series, who has liked this series, uh, has commented. It means a lot. Um, this has been kind of a bit of a proof of concept in many ways about what I want to do in future with this channel and generally uh, long distance, although as I learned, long distance but ambling along, not necessarily trying to push it too much. An interesting ride at seeing, you know, the places like Amberley and uh, today, Mion, is it Mion Stroke or Mion Snake? Mion Snake would be appropriate. I think it's Mion Stoke. Mion Stoke, yeah. Mion Stroke? Mion Stoke. Mion Stoke. Uh, uh, you know, and that sort of attitude. And then the more friendly people and, and the whole uh, much more working class and much more kind of uh, industrial, agricultural thing. And, you know, going through the Neolithic landscape, which has been brilliant. I've really enjoyed that. Uh, it's a shame I couldn't look at more at the, uh, I looked at the long barrow, but it was just literally was just chucking it down. And I was like, I just can't, you know, I would love to have looked at that more, but it, I was like, no. And ironically, about an hour later, half an hour later, it, it then lessened. And, uh, you know, if I'd known that, this is the, the wonders of, of weather wraps. They don't tell you the degree of rain or carrot doesn't. And a few of those do. They, they sort of go, it's a precipitation uh, chance i'll actually that's that's useless metric what you want is is it going to be light rain or strong rain or is it going to be you know and, and also half an hour you don't want an every hour you know you, that's what caught me out today i hope you enjoyed the series um i'll probably link to one of the last uh videos of the south downs way series thank you for watching and thank you for all the people that have supported me in various ways like in sharing commenting it means a lot i thought no one would watch any of these videos uh, you know especially today when it's just been like total deluge and it's like oh tim what are you doing it's time to go home